All right then gang, so on to the next one, which is gonna be a masonry style layout. Now a true masonry layout is when you have a grid of items where all the elements in that grid go from left to right, a bit like on this Unsplash website. You can see a lot of items in the grid going left to right in three columns. And then more items start on the next row down. Now the masonry part of this grid design, the thing that makes it special is that all the items in the grid have their own different heights. They're all the same width though, it's just the height of each one that's different, normally driven by the content itself of that grid item. And the cool thing about a masonry grid is that on the next row, the grid items sit neatly under the items above them. So that might mean that individually they're nudged up a little bit or down a little bit so that we're not left with huge gaps or overlapping content between rows. And it looks nice and tidy, right? Now, this masonry layer has loads of items that have many different heights and it doesn't really matter what those heights are because the item underneath it will just budge accordingly every time. But this flexibility is not really possible using CSS grid alone because grids, CSS grid has rows of specific heights which end and start at defined positions in the grid. And you need to add a sprinkle of JavaScript to individually nudge items up and down on each row. Now, I don't want to delve into using JavaScript because that takes the focus away from CSS Grid. So what we're going to do is make a similar design, which is just a little bit more rigid in its approach, but it still looks really nice and like a masonry style design. So in our layout, the items in the grid are going to be able to have two specific heights, short or tall. Short items are going to be one row high and tall items are going to be two rows high. And the effect is this, which still looks like a nice masonry style grid. And on another day in the future, I'll probably make a video about how to transform this into a pure masonry grid using a dose of JavaScript as well. And by the way, we're also using CSS grid in the header right here as well. And each one of these links and the site title is a grid item in that grid. Anyway, let's get cracking on this layout. Okay, so I'm in the four masonry folder right here in the starter files, we already have this index.html file, which is empty as usual. We're just linking up to the styles.css file. And inside there, we just have a couple of little styles. Well, one in fact, for the body. And we're stripping away the margin. We're setting the font family to be poppins, which we import from Google Fonts right here. And we set the background to be F7, 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 which is an off-white, very light gray color. And in the browser, it looks something like this, just a blank canvas. So the first thing we're gonna do is get to work on the HTML template. So there's basically gonna be two sections to this layout. We have the header at the top, which is gonna stretch all the way across, and that's got all the links in it and the title. That's gonna be a CSS grid. And then also we have kind of the masonry grid as well, where all the pictures and the little text bubbles are, things like that. So let's do the header first of all. So we'll do a header tag and then inside that a nav tag. And then we're just gonna do a couple of dummy links so we'll say home for the first one. I'm gonna duplicate that and change this to articles. Doesn't really matter what the href is. Now in the middle of the nav, we're gonna have the title. So there's two links on the left, then the title in the middle and two links on the right. So for the title, we'll do an H1 and inside that a div because there's two lines to the title and each line is gonna have a div to put it onto the next line, if you like. So express is the first one and then the second div down here is gonna be yourself. So that's the title, and then after that we need two more links. So this one is gonna be guides, and then duplicate that, and we'll do one more, which is gonna be contact. All right, so that's the header pretty much done, and if we save this, it's gonna look pants, but later on when we add CSS grid, it's gonna look a little bit better. All right, so after the header, we want a main tag, and this is gonna be a grid in itself. Now, I'm not gonna give this a class of grid container as we have done in the past, because there's only gonna be one main tag on this web page, and we'll just style that as grid later. So inside here, we have multiple different grid items, right? And each one of them is just gonna be a div. So let's do a div for text, first of all. The text bubbles are gonna have an H3, and I'll just say a note about style since this is a style website. And then underneath that, we're gonna do a paragraph tag with a bit of lorem ipsum. So I'll say lorem 15 or something like that. And in fact, that's a little bit too long. So let me delete this a little bit. We'll just go to maybe this, that'll do. 
Okay, so let's under that do an anchor tag and we'll just say read more and then that's pretty much it for the text bubble. So I'm going to do another div after this and this time it's going to be for an image. So inside here we don't have any text, only an image. So let's do an image tag. And by the way, all the images are inside this image folder. You can get all these from the course repo. So we have one, two and three. So we're just going to use those over and over. So the first one is just going to be using the one. So we'll say image forward slash one dot PNG like so. And then after that, we'll do another div. This is also going to be a text bubble. So we could just copy this one right here if we wanted to, like so. And then after that, we'll do another one, which is also going to be an image. So we'll grab that and paste it in, but we'll change the image to number two. And for the alts, by the way, let's just put in, this is a model. This is a model as well. Okay, and then after that, after this div, we want to go down here. What we'll do is another image, one after the other, just to vary up. So we'll use image three right there. And again, model. And then down here, we'll do another div, which is text. So let me grab this. By the way, that should be note, not not. Note, note, uh, that's all we did. So let's paste this in and change that to note again. All right, so we've got another text one there. And then what we'll do is in fact make this a lot more text. So it could be, you know, maybe a tall bubble of text, a bit like the images. All right, and then down here we'll do another div. And this time it's going to be another image. In fact, let's just copy this one right here because we're gonna reuse the image one. Paste it in there. And then we'll do two more text ones, but they're gonna be these ones with not much text in them, the short ones. Paste it in and paste it in again. All right, so that's pretty much all there is to do, I think, for the HTML. Now, if I save this and preview, again, looks terrible at the minute, but we are gonna style this to make it look like a grid later on. So now let's go to the styles.css. We're gonna start with the header styles. So let's do the header selector first of all. And all I'm gonna do in here is set a background which is gonna be white, so FFF. That's just gonna make it stand out from the slightly gray background of the body. And then also give this a padding of around 10 pixels all the way around. Okay, so if we save this, we can see the white background over here of the header. Now we want to make this into a grid, remember, but it's not the header itself that we want to make into a grid, it's the nav inside the header. And then all of these then are gonna be grid items, including the H1. So there's five of these in total, so we need five columns, right? So let's go back to the styles and grab the nav. And inside here, the first thing I'll do is set a max width of 1400 pixels and then also the margin is gonna be zero, top and bottom, or to left and right to sit it in the middle. Then we're gonna display this as grid. And then we need grid, template, columns. And we need five columns, one for each of the links and title. There's five elements. So what I'm gonna do is use the repeat function to repeat something five times, and each column is gonna be one fraction. So they're all the same width, right? And then automatically remember this gets dumped into the first column, this into the second, this the third, fourth, and fifth, etc. All right then, so after that, I also want to align the items, but in fact, before we do that, let me save it and show you. So we can see at the minute, it's looking all right. If I make this a little wider, we can see it's kind of in the middle, but the text is over on the left of each grid item because you can see that the space over here is much less than the space over here. And also vertically, they're not aligned very well either. We'd like to bring all of these down so that they're in the middle of this title. So everything's kind of central in a vertical axis as well. So let's go back and down here we'll say text align first of all is gonna to be to the center. And that means that every link now is gonna be in the center going across horizontally. You can see the gap over here is now equal to this gap, but we wanna bring them down as well. And to do that, we can use align items. So align items, and we'll say center for this as well. And that should bring them down to the center of each cell. So now they line up a bit nicer. All right, cool. So now what I want to do is just add in a few styles for the anchor tags and the H1. So 
I'm going to copy these from my repo because they're nothing to do with CSS Grid and you don't want to watch me type them out, just a couple of styles. So for every anchor tag, we take away the text decoration, so no underline, and we colour them as well a dark grey. For the H1, we text transform to be uppercase and the line height is 1M. So let me save this, preview, looking a bit better. Now there's one more thing I want to do with this over here. I want to make it so that the words are pretty much the same length, right? And to do that, we can use letter spacing. But we also need to target each individual word separately. And that's why we added a separate div for each of these words, because we can use nth child to target each one individually. This is going to be the first child and this the last child. So again, I'm just going to copy these from my repo to save you watching me type these out from scratch, just two rules. So we target the H1, and then we target the div inside the H1, and this is for the first child, so the top word. The font weight is 800 pixels, um, sorry, 800, which is bold, and the letter spacing is 1.5 pixels. And what that's gonna do is put a little bit of space between each of these letters to make it a little longer, and it should be more of the length of this now. And then also for the last child, the second word, we set a font weight of 400, which is a little bit lighter. So if I save this and preview, we can see this looks a bit nicer. All right, cool. So that is the header part done. Next, we can move on to the main tag, which is also going to be a grid, and it's going to be all these items right here. So remember, in the index.html, we have this main tag. This is going to be set to display as a grid, and all of these divs inside the main tag are gonna be grid items, okay? So over here, let's target that main tag and spell it correctly for one. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is set a max width to this to be 1,200 pixels, also a margin, 60 pixels top and bottom, auto left and right, that means it's gonna sit in the middle of the page. So if we save this, we should see it scoot over to the middle of the page, right? We have this gap on the left now, awesome. And then after that, we want to give this a padding of about 20 pixels, and then we're gonna set the display to be grid. All right, so now what we wanna do is set the template columns. Now we're gonna have three columns, one, two, three. So we just need to set the grid template columns property. And they're all gonna be the same width. So one fraction, one fraction, one fraction, like so, okay? And if we press save now, then we should have seen this start to take effect. Ah, I need to add an R on right there. My mistake. Okay, yeah, looking a bit better. All right. Now, I also want to set the row height as well. But how am I going to do this? What I don't want to do is something like this. Grid, template, rows. And then at the minute, what have we got? We've got one, two, three rows. So I could say, okay, I want the row height to be 250 pixels, right? So I could do three of these because we've got three rows. And now it's going to set the row height of all of these to be 300 or rather 250 pixels. Now, fair enough, these are overlapping at the minute, but we'll sort that out later on. But imagine I later add more items to this grid and we have six rows. Well, where are they going to get their height from? Because we've only coded three of the row heights right here. So we'd have to come back here and add three more, 250, etc. But... There's a different property we can use instead of this when we don't know how many rows we're going to have. And that property is called grid hyphen auto hyphen rows. And we set that to be whatever height we want any new row to have in the future. So any new row that gets added is automatically now going to be 250 pixels, right? So that is the size of each row. That is the height of each row. All right. So I also want to set a gap, which is going to be 30 pixels. All right, so let me save this now, preview. Now, like I said, we can see that all the content is overlapping, but later on, we are gonna sort this out because some of the different grid items are gonna span two rows and therefore push the content down. So don't worry too much about that for now. For now, what I'd like to do is style these divs, these grid items a little bit. So I'm gonna come down here and say main div. This is gonna target all of the grid items because they're all divs and then what I'm going to do is set the overflow first of all to be hidden all right now if I save this and preview we can now see that they're not overlapping and where the content is too big it's just being clipped off because overflow is hidden so it's already looking a bit nicer all right so after that I'm going to give each one a background color 
and that's going to be white. Now this is not really going to affect the images, just the text. We can see these text bubbles right here. These have a background now of white. And yeah, fair enough, these have white on the edges, but later on we're going to make the images full width as well, so we're not going to see that height, or that white rather, not the height. All right, so let's come down after this and say the border radius of each of these is going to be six pixels just to soften up the corners. The border also is going to be 16 pixels. It's going to be solid and that's going to be white as well. So F, F, F. Press save and now we can see we have a border around all of the image now. Okay. So the corners look nice and soft as well. There's one more thing I want to do. That's add a box shadow to each of those. So let's say box shadow and um, we'll say three pixels three pixels three pixels rgba to add an alpha channel zero 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 so black and then 0 0.05 just to add a very subtle box shadow and a bit of depth that's looking a lot nicer all right so now i just quickly want to target the images inside the main divs we could add a div right here if we wanted to but we don't need to let's just do main image and then inside here we'll say min width is going to be 100 percent but also the height of the images is going to be 100 percent as well now when i save this and preview it's going to look squashed these images right but when we later on designate different heights to these grid items i can say this one needs to be tall and it's going to take up two rows in height then it's going to kind of unstretch that image does that make sense so that's pretty much looking good so far we've kind of got the bare bones of the grid down we've done the grid up here as well i want to leave it there for this video because i don't want it to get too long but in the next video what we're going to do is tackle how we can make certain items tall like these image ones and maybe this text one right here as well so we'll do that in the next lesson but also make it responsive as well because at the minute it's not responsive okay so i'm going to see you in the next lesson